So in the previous video, we learned how we can take glucose molecules and do some chemical modifications to eventually form this phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate, this PRPP. And we know this PRPP is really important because we can take this PRPP and convert it into this IMP. And we know this IMP can be used to biosynthesize all the purine nucleotides. However, we can also take this PRPP and use it to biosynthesize this orotidine 5-monophosphate. And we know this particular intermediate is really important because it can be used to biosynthesize all of the pyrimidine nucleotides. So in the last video, I focused on purine metabolism, and I have a link of that video below. But in this video, I'm going to focus on pyrimidine metabolism. And again, we know key step is taking this PRPP and converting it into this orotidine 5-monophosphate. And we know this guy is extremely important because it can be used to biosynthesize all of the pyrimidine nucleotides. So how does this process work? So right now, it looks like it's one quick step forming this particular intermediate. But in reality, it's actually a little more complex. Because if you think about it, what we're doing is we're getting rid of this pyrophosphate group and we're replacing it with this complex nitrogenous base. So how do we form this particular intermediate, which we know is really important because it's used to biosynthesize all of the pyrimidines. So how do we form this particular intermediate? Well, what we do is we take a glutamine molecule, a bicarbonate molecule, and an ATP molecule, and we react them. And the point is we react them in a way to form this carbamyl phosphate. And if you're curious, the glutamine donates this nitrogen, which becomes this nitrogen. The bicarbonate donates these atoms, which form these atoms. Then the ATP donates a phosphate group. But then we form this carbamyl phosphate. Then what happens is it reacts with this aspartate. And it's really a quite simple mechanism. We essentially form a bond, and then we break a bond. These electrons fall on this guy. And when we do that, we essentially form this carbamyl aspartate. Now, once we form this carbamyl aspartate, it goes through an intramolecular cyclization reaction, where again, we attack forming a bond, then this bond breaks, but then we form a ring. And when we form a ring, now we have our erotic acid. Now we have our erotic acid, which we can react with this PRPP. We can react them to form now our intermediate. And again, it's a simple mechanism. We form a bond, and then we break a bond, We and this guy falls off, and now we have our orotidine 5-monophosphate, which we know is really important because it's used to biosynthesize all of our pyrimidines. So again, this and something important to realize is this orotidine 5-monophosphate is all we need. Once we form this intermediate, now we can biosynthesize all of our pyrimidines, and this is how we biosynthesize it. So again, we know we take this PRPP and we react it to form this intermediate, which is used to biosynthesize all the pyrimidines. And we know in order to break this up and to form this complex nitrogenous base, we need some help from these amino acids and bicarbonate. But now once we form this intermediate, now we can biosynthesize all the pyrimidines. So how do we do this? Well, the first step is essentially a quick decarboxylation reaction. We get rid of this carboxyl group and now we have our UMP. Now we simply add a phosphate group. Now we have our UDP. Now once we form this UDP, it can enter through two separate pathways. It can either enter this pathway where we simply get rid of this hydroxyl group forming this deoxyribose, this DUDP. Then we get rid of this, this phosphate group forming this DUMP. Then what we can do is we can quickly add one carbon group. And when we quickly add one carbon group here, now we have this compound, this T-nucleotide. And again, how do we add that one carbon group? Well, we learned this in the previous video. We use this tetrahydrofolate derivative. And we know this tetrahydrofolate derivative is essentially an enzyme that donates these methyl groups, that donates these sing single carbon groups. And we know this tetrahydrofolate derivative is really important because it donates carbon groups for anabolism to build molecules. And again, so this tetrahydrofolate derivative donates this carbon group to form this T nucleotide base pair. And again, where does this guy get this carbon? Well, again, it gets its carbon from, from serine. Serine donates a carbon, which can then now be donated to form this T-nucleotide. And now once we form this T-deoxynucleotide, we can simply just add phosphate groups forming all these T-base nucleotide base pairs. However, we also know we can take this UDB to enter a separate pathway, a different pathway. 
And in this pathway, we essentially add a phosphate forming this UTP. Now, once we form this UTP, we can react it with glutamine. And essentially what happens is this glutamine donates a nitrogen group. When it donates a nitrogen group here, essentially now we have this CTP. So now we have this C nitrogenous base pair. Now we can do some quick, simple modifications. For example, we get rid of a phosphate group forming the CDP. And then we can essentially take this ribose and form it into a deoxyribose, forming this deoxy CDP. And then again, we can quickly add a phosphate. Now we have this deoxy CTP. And I know this seems like a lot of complex reactions, but really these were each quite simple chemical modifications. So these were really, each of these steps were really quite simple steps. And in aggregate, all these steps are used to biosynthesize all of the pyrimidine nucleotides. For example, we have our two DNA pyrimidine nucleotides. We have our C and our T DNA nucleotides. And we also have our RNA pyrimidine nucleotides. We have our U and our C RNA pyrimidine nucleotides. And something important that I always find really interesting is, again, this is how we biosynthesize all of our pyrimidine nucleotides. And again, what are the ingredients necessary to biosynthesize all these pyrimidine nucleotides? Well, again, we need this PRPP, we need, and we need these amino acids. But something important to realize, all these ingredients needed to biosynthesize all these pyrimidine nucleotides can come from glucose. Uh, we can essentially take glucose molecules and convert those glucose molecules into all of these ingredients necessary to form all these pyrimidines. So we can essentially de novo biosynthesize all these pyrimidines, all these pyrimidine nucleotides from glucose molecules. For example, we can take some glucose molecules and convert them into this PRPP. Now we have our PRPP. We can take other glucose molecules, enter them through central metabolism to essentially form this intermediate, which can be used to form serine which can then donate the carbon groups, which, which again can form this tetrahydrofolate derivative. We can also take glucose molecules, enter them into central metabolism to form this particular intermediate, which can then be converted into glutamine. And again, granted, when we take glucose and convert it into this intermediate and convert it into glutamine, we do have to add a nitrogen that usually comes from glutamate, but the, and then also we can take glucose, enter it through central metabolism to form this particular intermediate, which can then be converted into aspartate, which again, granted, we also need to donate another nitrogen from glutamate to form this aspartate. And again, also, we know when we go through central metabolism, we release carbon dioxide molecules, which can form bicarbonate. But the point is, these are the ingredients necessary to form pyrimidines. These are the only ingredients necessary to form all these pyrimidines. And all these ingredients can come from glucose molecules. So therefore, our cells can biosynthesize all these pyrimidine molecules, these pyrimidine nucleotides from glucose molecules. So again, that's how you biosynthesize these pyrimidine nucleotides. But eventually, we're going to degrade these pyrimidine nucleotides. Like all biomolecules in the body, like proteins and lipids, we biosynthesize biomolecules, and then we degrade them. We have turnover. So it's the same thing with nucleotides. We biosynthesize these nucleotides, and then we degrade them. So how do we degrade these nucleotides? Well, it, it depends. For example, how do we degrade this T nucleotide? Well... What we do is we get rid of the phosphate groups forming this thymidine. Then what we do is we hydrolyze this bond, releasing this nitrogenous base, this pyrimidine nitrogenous base as, as the form of this thymine. Then we can do some quick chemical modifications. For example, we reduce it forming this compound. Then we essentially break this bond. We, we break this bond forming this compound. Now, once we form this compound, we can do some chemical modifications and break it up to essentially form these waste products. And we know this waste product, this, this nitrogen, which essentially came from this guy, this ammonia is a waste product, which we know we can process into urea, which can be excreted out through our urine. We know this carbon, this oxygen essentially is lost as carbon dioxide, which we can simply breathe out. And we know the rest of this waste product is converted into this intermediate, which is, again, a waste product which can be excreted out in our urine. But something important to realize is this compound actually has some energy, some stored energy, some high energy electrons. So there's energy in this compound. So what we can do is we can essentially use it as a source of energy. We can convert it into this succinyl-CoA, which can enter the Krebs cycle and be used as a source to enter the Krebs cycle and be used to create ATP. So that's how we degrade this T pyrimidine. 
However, how do we degrade the C pyrimidine? Well, again, it's a similar idea. We get rid of the phosphate groups forming the cytidine. Then again, we do some simple modifications. Essentially, instead of a nitrogen, we convert into this carb carbonyl group. Then again, it's a similar idea. We hydrolyze this bond, forming this nitrogenous waste product. Then we reduce it. Then we, we break this bond, forming this waste product, which again, we break up into these waste products. Because again, the nitrogen, this carbon, this carbonyl is broken up essentially as a, carboxyl, as a carbon dioxide. And then the remaining is this beta alanine. So now we have this, these waste products. And again, it's the same idea. This ammonia is processed into urea, which is, is excreted out through our urine. This carbon dioxide we breathe out, and this beta alanine can also be excreted out in our urine. But again, it's the same idea. This guy has some stored energy in it, so we can actually use it as a source of energy, convert it into acetyl-CoA, which can enter the Krebs cycle and be used to create ATP. So that's how we break down the CT CTP. Pyrimidine. And it's the same idea how we break down this UTP. The way we catabolize and break down this UTP is we convert it into the CTP. Now, once we've converted into the CTP, it enters the same pathway. But jet for all these pyrimidines, it's a similar idea. The point is, is we process them and we hydrolyze these bonds, releasing this pyrimidine nitrogenous waste waste products these the nitrogenous based waste products which we can process into these waste products which are excreted in our urine or we breathe them out however we don't we knew when we biosynthesized these pyrimidines it required a lot of energy when we originally biosynthesized all these pyrimidines it required a lot of energy so we don't want to waste energy biosynthesize these pyrimidines just to immediately degrade them with it that's a waste of energy so instead of degrading them and, and, and degrading them into these waste products, what we can do is we can salvage them. For example, instead of taking this TTP and degrading it, what we can do is we can take this thymine and we can salvage it. We can recycle it. For example, what we do is we can take this thymine and again, instead of degrading it, and in essentially degrading this TTP, what we can do is we can salvage it. We can take this thymine and again, we can react it with this ribose 1-phosphate to reform this thymidine, which can be used to reform this TTP. And the same idea, instead of taking these, because again, it required a lot of energy to biosynthesize these pyrimidines. So instead of wasting them and immediately degrading them, instead what we can do is we can salvage them. We can, we can salvage these nitrogenous bases and enter them through the salvage pathway, essentially recycle them, re-reacting them with ribose 1-phosphate to form this uridine, which can then be used to biosynthesize all the pyrimidine nucleotides. So again, this video covers the pyrimidine metabolism, the, the biosynthesis and the catabolism of these pyrimidines. And again, in the last video, we spoke about this purine metabolism, so I have a link of that video below.